Do you love classic 80s sax like this? Then you're gonna love today's lesson because we're gonna be taking inspiration from that classic Hall & Oates track, I Can't Go For That, and we'll be pulling out three melody building blocks and then applying them on our saxophone so we can get that classic sound on alto or tenor sax. I'm gonna show you some easy techniques and some more advanced ways as well. And most importantly though, we're gonna have a load of fun. So get your 80s mood on, grab your saxophone, let's get stuck in. <laughs> G'day, it's Nigel here from Sax School. Hey, thanks so much for joining me for another one of these videos. Good to see you again. I hope your saxophone practice is going well. If you're new here, then don't forget to consider subscribing, click the bell notification, all that sort of stuff. We make a video like this every Friday. Now, I've got a free PDF and practice track that you're gonna wanna grab for today's lesson. It's all inside the locker. That's the place where we keep all of our free resources. There's a ton of stuff in there. You can register from, from the courses page of our website, saxschoolonline.com, or follow the links down there, or they'll be up here as well. Now just before we get going, if this is your very first time doing a jam session with me, then maybe go check out my Easy Beginner Jam lesson first. I'll put a link up here because that really talks you through how to play all of the notes and gets you started from the basics. But if you're ready to dig into something a bit more advanced, then stick around because we're gonna cover loads of stuff in the lesson today. So as I mentioned at the start, we're gonna look at the original solo and take some little clues from it, some little melody chunks so we can understand the style. Then I'm gonna show you three of those melody chunks on alto and tenor saxophone. And then I'm gonna talk about how we can apply it and we're gonna get stuck in with the jam session. If you wanna jump straight to where the jam session starts, then go to this time here. <laughs> Just before we get started, why are we looking at Hall & Oates? I can't go for that today. Well, good question. Couple of reasons, first of all, I think this style of saxophone is awesome. It's so much fun. If you're like me and you grew up through the 80s, then these are probably the saxophone sounds that you were listening to when you first started playing. But also, inside Sax School with our thousands of members, we're focusing on pop song or hit song saxophone this month. And that means we're looking at classic solos like this. Our members are learning a challenge song called Heartbreaker, which is kind of written in this style. And we've got a fantastic masterclass happening for members with Mr. Casual from Hall of Notes, that's Charlie Deshant. He's coming and doing a special session for us inside Sax School. If you're a member, then go check out the replay. And if you're not a member yet, then right now, actually, the 14-day trial is still running. So you can find the links down below. Go register, and then you can come and join us for this session or catch the replay. <laughs> Right, first steps then, let's go listen to the original solo and get some inspiration from the way Charlie Deshan is playing in this particular recording. Let's have a listen. Okay, so right out the gate, that first bit, it's brilliant. I love the way it's so simple. It's a simple line, but it's got such an energy to it and it's so decisive. So he's not just playing straight quavers or eighth notes there, he's really accenting all of the notes. I love the simplicity of that and I love the energy and I think the mistake that most people make when they're copying something like this is they miss the energy part. They're just focusing on the rhythm and the notes but not the energy. What happens next? Okay, so that's quite interesting too because again, very rhythmical but he's doing a cool little false fingering thing in there. I'll show you what I mean. So the basic rhythm is very, very simple, but he's swapping between the normal D and the palm, the palm key D to get that sort of muffled sound. Yeah, I love that, really, really cool. Okay, what happens next? Okay, so basically the theme all the way through here is it's very rhythmical and very, very simple. Let's see how we can apply that to our improvising. Okay, let's get stuck in and learn three melody building blocks that we can use in our jam session today. Just before we do that, you'll notice that all of these, pretty much all of these actually, are based on a five note scale, it's a pentatonic scale. It's a really powerful tool, particularly if you're playing in this sort of 80s pop style. A lot of funk styles are the same, and it's used all over the place. So our five notes on the alto saxophone are just A, C, D, E, G, and A, okay? A, C, D, E, G, and A, five notes. It sounds like this. Mm -hmm. 
Now, a cool thing about the pentatonic scale is you can add passing notes in there as well. In fact, to go from a pentatonic scale to a blues scale, all we need to do is add in one note. So we go A, C, D, D sharp or E flat, and then the E, G, A, and that gives us a blues scale. And you'll notice that Charlie Deschamps uses that passing note and other passing notes as well between the pentatonic notes in his solo. Let's look at the notes on the tenor sax. So for tenor sax, it's a D pentatonic. The notes are D, F, G, A, C, and D. D, F, G, A, C, and D. And of course, if you want to stick that passing note in to get the blue scale out of that, it's D, F, G, A flat, or G sharp, A, C, D. Okay, so we're just sticking that G sharp or A flat in there. That sounds like this. <laughs> When we're doing our jam today, you can just stick to those five notes if you want to, but here's three melody building blocks that you can use as well. The first one is dead simple, because I said we're gonna start easy and get to more advanced. It is really, really easy. You can see it down below here. We're just using quavers or eighth notes. Now, you might be thinking, Nigel, this sounds too easy. But the reason I'm showing you this is because a lot of our solos from this period are like this. They're really, really simple. And it's not about the notes, it's about the attitude. So the rhythm here is dead simple. It's three, four, um, bop, 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 bop. That's it. Bop, 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 bop. The notes are G for the alto sax or C. You could use the octave key if you want for the tenor sax. So it sounds like this. Almost seems too good to be true, right? But trust me, if you play that with attitude, with a good solid uh, air support, really pushing your air through from here, a big sound, tonguing with uh, assertiveness, then it's gonna sound really, really awesome. Let's look at the second building block. So our second building block's a little bit more interesting. We've got a bit more movement in there. I'll play it for you first. Again, the notes are actually quite simple. We've got a passing note in there. We're going from G down to F sharp, that's our passing note, to E, and then we scoot back up to the F sharp, quick to G, back to F sharp, and then back to E. So we've got the G and the E from our pentatonic scale that we learned before, and the passing note of the F sharp. G, F sharp, E, F sharp, G, F sharp, E. Let's look at the notes on tenor. So on tenor, our passing note is gonna be the B natural, but we're gonna start on the C. So you go C, B, A, B, up to C, back to B, down to A. I'll show you a trick with that actually. C, B, A, B, you can use the side C here, but with our nose picker, our right index finger, on the middle key there, pushing that in, that also gives you C. C, B, A, B, C, B, A, C, B, A, B, C, B, A. This is what it sounds like. Now you'll notice again, I'm playing that with loads of attitude. I'm pushing loads of air through it. I'm tonguing it really aggressively. I'm trying to get that big, fat, assertive sound. Imagine that you're on stage. There's 20,000 people in front of you. You're strutting across the stage. ba da ba ba ya Let's look at the third building block. So our third building block uses that D-sharp passing note that I mentioned that you can use to go from a pentatonic to a blues scale. And the notes are D-sharp, D, C, A, G, C, A, A. So D-sharp, D, C, A, G, C, A, A. Let's look at the notes on the tenor sax. So here we're starting on the G sharp, so three fingers and a little G sharp key there. And we're going G sharp, G, F, D, C, F, D, D, da, 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 D, da, 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 do, do, da, do, 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 do. Let's have a listen. Now you'll notice that I'm tonguing all those notes really aggressively and I'm playing with loads of energy. Okay, let's put all this together in a jam session. 
Right, let's get stuck in and do the jam session. Here's the rules of how it's gonna work. First of all, you'll notice there's two bars of drums before we come in, and then what's gonna happen is we're gonna share two bars each. So I'll play for two bars, you play for two bars. Now we've got three building blocks, and we're gonna go through each of those building blocks four times. So with building block one, in my first two bars, I'll be playing building block one for two bars, then you get a chance to play it for two bars. We'll go back and forth, a second time, a third time, and a fourth time. And as we go through the four times through each building block, I'm gonna start to experiment with that building block and build some other solo around that building block. And I'm gonna use my pentatonic scale as a foundation for that. So we'll do that all on building block one, then we'll do it on building block two, then we'll do it on building block number three, and then the fourth time through, we're just gonna have some fun. I'm gonna use all three building blocks and just explore the instrument a little bit and see if I can put all the stuff that we've talked about today into action. Now, the most important thing is, I don't want you to feel like you need to copy what I'm doing exactly. Instead, listen to what I'm playing and use that as inspiration. So please don't ask me for a transcription of what I'm playing. I don't really wanna give you that. What I'd rather you do is listen to the way I'm playing with the sound, with uh, the articulation, with the overall attitude, and see if you can absorb some of that into your playing. So take inspiration from me, and then you come up with your own thing. You be you, because you're a unique saxophone player, and I want you to try to find your style. Sound good? I'm gonna use my alto, but you could use your alto or your tenor. Follow the music down below. Let's go. Awesome, how'd you get on with that? I really hope you enjoyed it. This is the sort of lesson you can use over and over again because every time you do it, you'll explore something new about your playing. You'll find a new sound that you really, really love. So please bookmark this or make a note of it and come back and use this as much as you can. And don't forget to grab those free resources from the locker as well. So the PDF and the backing track. 
And let me know in a comment if you like these kind of lessons too, because it would really help me uh, to know whether I should be making more of these kind of lessons. Now, don't forget if you want to take things a bit further, then we've got tons of resources like this that our members use inside SAC School. There's thousands of members there. There's over a thousand courses, lessons, and masterclass replays for you to go and check out as well. There's a 14 day trial running as we are filming this. So go check it out. You can get that from sacschoolonline.com or look for the links down below. Most importantly though, keep having fun exploring that 80s sound in your saxophone and I'll catch you on the next video.